everyone, you are welcome to my new video. It's me, Olya, here, and I do sincerely congratulate you on finding a couple of extra minutes in your busy, I'm sure, schedules to learn some Ukrainian. Today we are talking about genitive case. And if you are watching this video, I assume that you have already seen my previous two videos on cases, the introductory video and the video on a nominative case, so that you will be more or less familiar with the things uh, that I'm going to be talking about in this video. So, genitive case, first of all, let's figure out the questions that identify this um, case. So, the questions to identify the genitive case in Ukrainian language would be Koho, or if we have to translate them directly, of whom? Чого? Of what? So, as you can tell, all of the questions for genitive case have something to do with possession. And we mostly use genitive case for when we talk about possession, about the relationship of possession between things, but not only. And we will talk more in details about usage of um, genitive case later on. First of all, let's figure out how do we form uh, the genitive case in Ukrainian language. So, as I told you, when we change the case of a noun, we might expect two kinds of two. I am showing for two kinds of changes. Whether it would be the change of um, a, of an ending or a change within the noun itself, with a root, within a root, oh, consonant or vowels. Sometimes there there can be alterations. Some letters will get gone. So be ready for that. Today in this video, I am only focusing on changing the endings. Uh, depending on the gender and the number of a noun and the alterations. Let's just take them as they are and talk about the alterations later on because this class is going to be a mess if I am going to go with it that deep. Now, the endings for genitive case and for other cases that we are going to learn sooner will, will depend on two major factors. First of all, on um, the gender and the number of a noun and the original ending that this noun has in nominative case, in its basic form. Now let's begin with a feminine singular word. If a feminine singular word ends in a, then in genitive case it changes to e. So school, школа, школи, desk, парта, парти. Ukraine, Ukraina, Ukraini. Okay, girl, divchena, divchene. E. Uh, let's take some Ukrainian names. Um, Svetlana, Svetlany, Olga, Olhe, um, Oksana, Oksane. Let's take some foreign names, not of Ukrainian origin, like um, Rebecca, Rebecca, uh, Fatma, Fatmy, Samira, Samire. If a noun ends in ya, soft sign or mjaki znak, or a consonant, in genitive it will change to the ending i. Example, feminine pupil. Uchenitsa, uchenitsi, uh, the capital city. Stolitsa, stolitsi, the well. Krinitsa, krinitsi, matir. As you see, ends in a consonant, r, materi, night, nich, nochi. You see an alteration there already, but we are talking about alterations later. We are now only interested in the change of an ending. Oven, peach, patchy, uh, salt, seal, soli. Also, change of an ending and the alteration of e and o in the root of a uh, noun. And also in Ukrainian we have many singular feminine words that end in e -ya. In that case, if we turn it to genitive, it will change to e -yi. e -ya, e -yi. Situation, situatia, situatii. Dream, mriya, mriyi, mriya, mriyi. Um, geografia, geography, geografia, Geografii. The name Sofia, Sofii, uh, Cynthia, 
Sinky. Now we are done with feminine, let's go to masculine singulars. So if a masculine singular word ends in a consonant, any, without any softening, without anything, just a hard consonant, uh, we will add ending a. For example, student, student, studenta, couch, divan, divana, divana, stepan, a name, stepana, john, Jona, steven, stevena, ahmed, ahmeda, raj, raja. So these, these last ones were foreign names, not Ukrainian. And, the, and let's take the word kit. Uh, masculine cat, right? Kit. If you want to make a genitive, we would also add an ending, but there would be an alteration. Kit, kota. You see, we added an ending, but as well, e in the root changes to o. Kit, kota. Alteration. Sorry about that. We were talking about hard endings. Now let's go to soft endings. So if a masculine singular noun ends in soft sign or miakei znak, or in U, and U in Ukrainian is a consonant that is never harsh, it is always soft, we add ending ya. So, вчитель, teacher, вчителя in genitive, olivets, pencil, olivtia, kravets, tailor, kravtia, okay, villain, lichodi, lichodia, thief, kradi, Kradiya. So you will see the change, y changes to ya. Now the next piece of information I'm going to give you is for more advanced students. Uh, so if you are just getting to know about um, cases in Ukrainian, this might be a little bit of extra and too complicated for you, so you can perfectly go with what I have given you for masculine singular. Ending a ya, depending on the ending of the original noun. Now, if you are more advanced student and you want to improve your speaking, uh, so this might be a, a useful tip for you. So, in Ukrainian, um, masculine singular noun will take a little bit different endings, not a, ya, but u, you, when. When we are talking about an abstract concept about an emotion or state of mind about a natural phenomena or location or institution we take ending u when the original noun ends in a hard consonant for example college 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 room class class classu Mm, let's think of a natural phenomena like rain, dosht, doschu, hrad, hradu, snow, snih, snihu, urahan, urahanu. Emotions or state of mind, for example, laughter, smih, smihu, plach, crying, plach, plachu. So that's when those four categories of nouns take the ending u. And the ending u, similarly to the ending ya, the noun in genitive case will take if originally it ends in soft sign or y. So basically when it has the soft ending. For example, burevi, bureviyu, as in heaven or paradise, raju, museum, musei, as a location or institution, museu. Things are a bit easier with uh, neuter nouns. So if a neuter noun ends in o, we remove the o and change it to a instead. So, for example, village, selo, sela, a town or city, misto, mista, a window, vikno, vikna, apple, jabluko, jabluka. Circle, kolo, kola. Now, if a neuter noun ends in e, then the ending changes to ya. Field, pole, polya in gen. Face, lice, lice. Heart, serce, serce. Sun, sonce, 
Солнце. Now, if we have such case as two consonants, double consonant, that is followed by ending я, yeah, this word doesn't change at all. For example, life, життя, would be життя in nominative, життя in genitive. Knowledge, знания, знания in genitive. Uh, footwear, взуття. Now also a tip for a more advanced learners, uh, there is in Ukrainian there is a more or less numerous group of words that means animals, babies, kitten, puppy, piglet, duckling, goosling and so on. Nouns like that in Ukrainian mostly end in ya. So we remove that ending ya and add yate. Kitten, koshenya, koshenyate, puppy, tsutsenya, tsutsenyate, piglet. Порося, поросяти. Some of these cute baby animals names in Ukrainian and not in ya but in a. So the system is the same. We remove this a and add ати. Like small horse, лоша, лошати. A baby chicken, курча, курчати. Now I wanted to, as I promised in the beginning of the video, I want to talk more in details about the usage of genitive case. When do we use genitive case? So the biggest clue for the usage of genitive um, case in Ukrainian is laying within the questions. So we were saying that the questions for genitive case are кого, of whom, and чого, of what. We use genitive case when we talk about belonging of something to someone or as somebody possessing someone. Uh, for example, книга Степана, the book of Степан, book of whom, Степан, книга Кого? Степана. The window of school. Вікно школи. Of what? Of school. Школи. The female uh, student of college. Студентка коледжу. The female student of what? Of college. Also, we use nouns in genitive case in some negative sentence. But not as a subject, but, but as an object. So, if there is a negative sentence in some negative sentences when we have objects they can go in genitive case uh, for example uh, let's take a negative sentence like there is no rain today сьогодні немає дощу немає чого there is no what there is absence of what of a rain there is no salt in the kitchen на кухні немає солі so we have absence of what of um, salt. У Світлани немає брата. Кого? Чого? Немає кого? Брата. Немає... So we have absence of whom? Of brother. So... But before we start learning, I would like to remind you that if you want, you can follow my page on Facebook, which is called Let's Learn Ukrainian, or any of my accounts on Instagram at Let's Learn Ukrainian, or on TikTok at Let's Learn Ukrainian. So if you are using any of the platforms, you can go there and show me some love and I would truly appreciate it. Also, if you like my content and would like to support my channel, you can do that on Patreon and I will leave the link also down below where you can easily find it. And okay, so that's a little intro and now we are going to focus on our genitive case. Genitive case in Ukrainian is called Rodovy Vidminok. Rodovy Vidminok. And the questions that rodovy vidminok or genitive case respond to are koho and choho. Koho of whom and choho of what. Okay? So naturally, the first and the um, most common, I feel like, um, instance of usage genitive case is when we are talking about possession, when we mean to say that something belongs to somebody, somebody owns something and things like that. We are now talking about Ukrainian equivalent of um, English phrases that contain apostrophe s. When we talk about possession, for instance, John's car or uh, my sister's husband, uh, or uh, my brother's apartment, and so on. Or when we are talking about possession, using a preposition of. Uh, a flat of my parents, uh, a book of my sister, and so on. You understand me. So how it works in Ukrainian. 
Територія України. The territory of Ukraine. Територія України. Квартира моєї сестри. Квартира моєї сестри. The flat or the apartment of my sister. Дружина мого брата. Дружина мого брата. The wife of my brother. And usually I'm telling you that in Ukrainian it doesn't really matter which um, order of words we choose for our sentence, right? It, okay, it matters, but it doesn't matter as much as it matters in English. Well, in this case, I'm recommending you to pay the attention to the word order. So the thing that is owned by someone comes first, and then somebody who owns this thing comes second, okay? First is the thing, and second is the owner. Okay, so we say автомобіль Джона, the car of John, not Джона автомобіль. We don't really say Джона автомобіль. Another instance of using genitive case in Ukrainian is in some negative sentences when our noun is an object of this negative verb, okay? But again, this rule, unfortunately, is not universal. So if you ask me, does every Ukrainian verb behave in that way? No, unfortunately not. It will depend on many factors. Some Ukrainian verbs uh, will require accusative in positive statement, but in negative statement they might require either accusative or genitive. For instance, we might have a positive statement uh, saying um, I know this word. Я знаю це слово. I know this word. Я знаю що. Я знаю це слово. Що це слово. Це слово here goes in accusative case. But when we want to make a negative statement, we would say Я не знаю чого. Цього слова. Я не знаю цього слова. Here, цього слова will go in a genitive case. So, accusative in positive statement, but genitive in negative. Another instance. Він зробив помилку. Він зробив помилку. He made a mistake. Він зробив що? Помилку. Accusative case, positive statement. But if we want to say that he hasn't made a mistake, he didn't make a mistake, we would say він не робив помилки. Він не робив помилки. Він не робив чого? Помилки. Genitive case. And uh, the last instance um, in this unit. Uh, українці мають таку традицію. Українці мають таку традицію. Ukrainians have Uh, such a tradition, such tradition. Українці мають що? Таку традицію, accusative case, знахідний відмінок. But if you want to say that Ukrainians don't have this tradition, we would say українці не мають чого? Такої традиції. Genitive case. Українці не мають такої традиції. So, Genitive and accusative are sort of in conflict here because both can be used. It depends on many factors. It depends on a verb that we are working with. And also it might um, depend on meaning. I know I'm going a bit in depth now, uh, but um, we decided to begin with to go in depth in genitive case. So sorry if you aren't interested, just skip to the next um, unit. For instance, I said already it will depend on a verb, but it also will depend on um, the quality of the object, of this uh, noun that we have. For instance, when we have this object super definite, and we are talking about all of them, of our um, object, then we would rather use accusative, okay? Uh, for instance, there is this uh, cup a glass of water and I'm telling somebody come on drink this water Vipy Vodu Vipy to Vodu drink this water Vodu accusative case here I used accusative case because that's the water I'm talking about 
this uh, uh, glass of water I'm recommending or asking somebody to drink for some reason. But when our object is not defined clearly, when uh, it's not this particular cup of water that I'm meaning, when I'm talking about water generally, then we would rather use genitive case. For instance, I'm feeling so thirsty, I'd like some water. You know, not this particular water, but some water. I'd like any water, okay? I would say, ja bod zaraz vypila vody, okay? Not, ja bod zaraz vypila vodu, okay? Because if I say, ja zaraz vypila vodu, it feels like I'm meaning some particular water, okay? But if I would just drink a water generally, any sort of water, I would say, ja vypila vody, and use genitive case, okay? So if... Um, our object is um, definite, if that's something particular we are talking about, then I would use accusative and many Ukrainian speakers, and it would be correct to use accusative, vypite vodu, but if it's indefinite, if that's any, any sort of water just to satisfy my feeling of thirst, and then I would use genitive, vypite vody. Another instance, does zjiż vže nareště cej chlíb? Zjiž vže nareště cej chlíb? Come on, finish eating this bread, okay? Cej chlíb. Ščo chlíb? Accusative case. This particular piece of bread that you have. Come on, finish it and let's do something more important than eating bread, okay? When you are eating a soup, for instance, and there is no bread, but you like bread, and you say, ah, oh, I wish I had some bread. Not some particular piece of bread but just the bread generally. Ja bym zaraz tak chliba zjela. Ja bym zaraz tak chliba zjela. I would so eat some bread now, okay? Also, we use genitive case when we have a phrase that contains a word that denotes quantity. A little, a few, a bit, much, many, uh, and so on. So many means bahato. A little mean or few means malo, stilke as much, skilke how much, and so on. Troshke a bit or some. For instance, це заможна родина. Це заможна родина. This is a wealthy family. Вони мають багато грошей. Вони мають багато грошей. They have a lot of money. So, the phrase we are interested in is багато грошей. Багато чого? Грошей. A lot of what? A lot of money. This is a wealthy family. They have a lot of money. Багато грошей. So, the um, word that denotes quantity is багато, much, or a lot of. And uh, грошей is our noun that goes in genitive case. Багато чого? Багато грошей. Також у них багато дітей. Також у них багато дітей. Or to sound better, you can say, а ще у них багато дітей. And also they have many children. Also they have many children. Також у них багато дітей. Again, the phrase we are interested in in this sentence is багато дітей. Багато кого? Дітей. Дітей goes in genitive case or for instance um, у цьому будинку дуже мало місця у цьому будинку дуже мало місця there is very little space in this house that's a small house right um, у цьому будинку дуже мало місця мало місця мало means little місце means space so мало чого Malo mista. Again, mista in genitive case. Or, for instance, you are sitting in a cafe, having your coffee, but then you realize you would like some milk. You can say, dodajte bud laska troshke moloka. Dodajte bud laska troshke moloka. Could you please add some milk? Uh, troshke moloka, some milk, troshke, choho troshke moloka. A small quantity of what? Of milk. 
Позич мені трошки цукру. Позич мені трошки цукру. Could you please lend me or can I borrow from you some sugar? Трошки цукру. Трошки чого? Трошки цукру. A little bit of sugar. Some sugar. Трошки цукру. В майбутньому це спричинить багато проблем. В майбутньому це спричинить багато проблем. Спричиняти means to cause. So, in the future, this is going to cause a lot of problems or many problems. Багато проблем. Багато чого? Багато проблем. Проблем is in genitive case. The next instance when we should use genitive case in Ukrainian is when we want to express the absence of something, okay? To say that there isn't something or there is no something, okay? In Ukrainian, we express the absence of something uh, with the help of the word nemaje, nemaje, or you can also meet a version nema, nema or nemaje means there isn't. So this something that is absent will also go in genitive case. For instance, вибач, але сьогодні у мене немає часу. Вибач, але сьогодні у мене немає часу. Sorry, but I don't have time today. There isn't time for me. I don't have free time. Немає чого. Немає часу. Часу in genitive case. I don't have what or there isn't what. There isn't time. Немає часу. Or, for instance, an excuse um, that... Uh, uh, governments like to come up with, they would like to do something, but unfortunately there isn't such an opportunity. They don't have it, okay? So they would say, На жаль, зараз немає такої можливості. На жаль, зараз немає такої можливості. На жаль, зараз немає такої можливості. Немає чого? Можливості, okay? Немає можливості. Можливість goes in a genitive case. Another instance when we should use genitive case is together with numbers that end in 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. For instance, мої доньці 6 років. Мої доньці 6 років. My uh, daughter is 6 years old. 6 чого років? 6 років. У нашій групі 18 Студентів. У нашій групі 18 студентів. There are 18 students in our group. 18 ends in 8, so um, студентів will go in genitive case. 18 кого? 18 студентів. В його бібліотеці було більше тисячі книжок. В його бібліотеці було більше тисячі книжок. There were more than a thousand of books in his library. A thousand of books. Тисяча книжок. Тисяча чого? Тисяча книжок. Книжок in genitive case. У мого знайомого вісім дітей. У мого знайомого вісім дітей. My acquaintance has eight children. Вісім дітей. Вісім кого? Дітей. Also, we use genitive case in Ukrainian when we are talking about a date. When we talk about the date, the name of the month goes in genitive case. For instance, перше лютого, перше чого лютого, the first of February. Again, our preposition of comes up. Uh, the third of March, третє березня. Третє чого? Березня. 27 вересня. 27 вересня. The 27th of September. Of September. Чого? Вересня. Genitive case. For instance, я народилася, let's say, uh, 1 травня. Я народилася 1 
travnia. I was born on the 1st of May. Pierwszego czego travnia. Or ja narodився 8 żołtnia. I was born on the 8th of October. 8 czego żołtnia. And the last instance that I want to talk about of usage genitive case in Ukrainian is with certain verbs. Yes, certain verbs in Ukrainian always require that their object goes in a genitive case. And here it doesn't really matter whether we have positive statement or negative statement. No, it will always be genitive. There isn't very many interesting verbs, uh, but I picked three of them uh, to show you and uh, in our next um, videos on other cases we would have much more interesting examples but uh, for now we have what we have uh, we have the verb um, bojatysia bojatysia uh, means to be afraid of again the preposition of i know so bojatysia czego or bojatysia koho for instance bojatysia sobak to be afraid of dogs or bojatysia uh, pavukiv to be afraid of spiders for instance ne treba bojatysia porazok ne treba bojatysia porazok you shouldn't be afraid of um, failure porazka means failure bojatysia czego porazok porazok in genitive case uh, or for instance vin z detinstva boitsia zmi Vin z detinstva boitsia zmi since he was a child he uh, is afraid of um, snakes. Boitsia czego zmi. Another verb is zaznavati. Zaznavati. Uh, zaznavati means to experience. And zaznavati is imperfective and uh, the perfective form would be zaznati. For instance, vona zrobila sprobu i zaznala porazki. Vona zrobila Sprobu i zaznala porazki. She made a try and she experienced a failure. Zaznawaty porazki, in English you can just say failed. So she failed. Vona zaznala porazki. Zaznala czego? Zaznala porazki. And the last verb is bażaty. Bażaty means to wish, to wish for something. Uh, for instance, bażaju um, uspichu. Bażaju uspichu means I wish you uh, success. Bażaju uspichu, bażaju czego? Bażaju uspichu. Uspichu in genitive case. Ponad use wony bażale szczęścia. Ponad use wony bażale szczęścia. More than everything, they wished for happiness. Bażale czego? Bażale szczęścia. Szczęście in genitive case. So yeah, traditionally, as usual, in my every video, I'm taking a small moment to appreciate all the wonderful people who are doing that already, who are supporting me. Here are some of their names. Thank you so much. Also, if you are the type of a person who doesn't like to take notes of their own or for some other reason, you would like to be able to download this particular presentation that I used in this video, as well as other presentation that I've been using in my videos for a while now you can do that they are available for my all patrons and another thing i wanted to ask you because you are the viewers you are deciding uh, what type of content i'm posting uh, so i have a video on genitive case on the grammar of genitive case endings etc also i have the video on usage of genitive case in which i'm explaining how this um, particular case is used in ukrainian in which situations we are using genitive case and this one is sort of part three it makes sense now we are going to just practice to make uh, word combinations uh, where we need to use genitive case in ukrainian the practical part so to say so would that make sense to you if i made the compilations 
like everything about genitive case, the grammar, the usage, and the practice. Would you like a compilation like that three in one, like everything about genitive case, everything about dative case, accusative, etc. Okay, so please let me know down below if you as a viewer would be interested in that type of content. Also, if you still have any questions or you have any interesting video ideas that you would like to suggest to me, also write them down below or, or just leave me any other comment. Write me whatever you want. I will truly appreciate your feedback any feedback that you want because you know that your comments your every interaction with me as a content creator is helping this channel grow on youtube so let us spread the word in ukrainian and now we can finally start learning okay so what are we doing in this video i'm giving you two or more as we are going to get to the more complicated um, word combinations. I will give you two nouns. I'm reminding you that we are using genitive case when we talk about possession, about the relationship of possession, uh, ownership, belonging something to something else, okay? And in Ukrainian, uh, the word order usually doesn't matter, but in a word combination like that, it does. So first, comes the object and second comes the owner, right? In this case, it is very similar to phrases like the hat of John or the house of our family. Okay, so the house is something that belongs to our family and our family is somebody who owns the house. So what are we doing here? I'm telling you two nouns in Ukrainian, both in nominative case but in order for them to start making sense, to become a word combination, we need to put one of them in genitive case, okay? For instance, I have two words, chashka and kava. Chashka means cup and kava means coffee. So in order to say a cup of coffee, we need to put the word coffee in genitive case, okay? So, and I will give you a moment to think about the correct answer and I will count to three and if you feel it's not enough time for you just press the pause write it down think about it and then I will give you the answer so you can check if you were correct or no so that's how we are going to work in this video okay so chashka kava chashka kavy a cup of coffee Chashka kave. Kava in genitive case will be kave. Next. Meska. Soup. Meska means bowl and soup means soup. So to say a bowl of soup, we will say in Ukrainian. If you said meska supu, you were correct. Meska supu, a bowl of soup. Next, dach, budinok. Dach means roof. Budinok means house. So the roof of a house will be dach budinku. Dach budinku, budinok in genitive case will be budinku. Dach budinku will mean the roof of the house. Next one, urok, matematika. Urok means class and matematika, as you guessed, means mathematics. Okay, so the lesson of mathematics or the class of mathematics or just maths class in English, that's how we would say it in English, in Ukrainian will be Urok matematiki. Urok matematiki. So matematika in genitive is matematiki. Urok matematiki means a class of math or just a maths class. Next, sklanka moloko. Sklanka means a glass. Moloko means milk. So to say a glass of milk, we will say sklanka. Moloka. Sklanka moloka. A glass of milk. Next. Uchen škola. Uchen means a student or a pupil. Škola means school. So to say a school student or a student of school, we will say in Ukrainian. 
учень школи. Учень чого? Учень школи. Кого чого are questions of genitive case. So, учень чого? Учень школи. Школа номенатив, школи дженитив. Next. Студент університет. Студент means student, університет means university. So, to say university student or a student of a university, in Ukrainian we will say Student Universitetu. Student Universitetu. Okay, Universitet is nominative, but Universitetu is genitive. Next. Gromadiany Kraina. Gromadiany means citizens and Kraina means country. So, to say the citizens of a country, we will say Gromadiany Kraina. Громадяни країни. Окей, okay? країна – nominative, but of a country – країни. In genitive case. Next. День народження. День means day, and народження means birth. Окей? Okay? So, the day of birth, or in English, birthday. День народження. День народження. You will say, well, народження in nominative and народження in genitive look the same. And you will be correct. And that is because the singular nouns of neuter gender that have this ending will not be changed in genitive case. They will look like they are in nominative. День народження. The day of birth or birthday. Next. День and незалежність. Very similar phrase to previous one, okay? But the word незалежність, independence, is of feminine gender. Therefore, it will be changed in genitive case. And we will have День незалежності. День незалежності. So, незалежність nominative, but незалежності genitive. So, if you have seen my video on uh, genitive case um, usage, uh, you know that genitive case is also used with words like a little bit, some of, enough of, many of, something, much of something, etc. And technically that is also an of phrase, right, in English. So, trochę and voda. Trochę means a little bit, a bit or some even. And voda means water. So to say a little of water or some water in Ukrainian will be trochę vody, right? Voda in nominative becomes vody in genitive. So some water or a bit of water, trochę vody. Next, bahato and slova. Bahato means many and slova means words. So to say many words in um, Ukrainian, we will say Bahato slive. Next, malo groshi. Malo means a little, a small amount, few. And groshi means money. So to say a little money, we would say Мало грошей. Мало грошей. Next. Достатньо борошно. Достатньо means enough. And борошно means flour. So let's imagine you are baking something. And you have enough of flour for that recipe. Right? Достатньо борошно. In genitive case will be. Достатньо борошна. Next, трошки, цукерки. Трошки means a little. Again, it's similar to трохи. You can say трохи, you can say трошки. Цукерки means candy. So, in genitive, it will be трошки цукерок. Next, достатньо масло. Достатньо, again, means enough, and масло means um, butter. 
достатньо масла. Недостатньо правила. So you can guess, достатньо meant enough. So недостатньо means not enough. The insufficient quantity of something. And правила means rules, okay? Grammar rules, for instance. So to say not enough rules, we will say недостатньо правил. Next. Забагато проблеми. Забагато means too much or too many. And проблеми means problems. Забагато проблем in genitive case. Next. Менше. Менше means fewer or less. Відповіді means answers. So, to say less answers, in Ukrainian we will say менше відповідей. Again, if you saw my previous video, you will know that also in Ukrainian we are using nouns in genitive case together with the word нема or немає, which means there isn't, okay, when we are talking about absence of something. So to say uh, there is no lesson, we would use two words, нема and урок, but we need to put the word урок in genitive case in order to make this uh, word combination sound um, correct, okay? So you have the time to do that, one, two, three, we will say нема уроку. There is no lesson. Нема уроку. For instance, сьогодні в мене нема уроку. Today I don't have lesson. You can say нема or you can say немає. Okay, the, these are two versions of the same word. Like in this uh, particular example, немає and можливість. Можливість means uh, possibility or opportunity. Okay, so to say there is no opportunity or there is no possibility, we will say Немає можливості. Можливість номінатив, genitive, можливості. Немає можливості. I don't have such an opportunity. У мене немає такої можливості. Next, when somebody is busy, they will usually use two words. Немає and час. But putting the noun час in genitive case will make them work. We will have... Немає часу. Немає часу. Вибач, у мене немає часу. Sorry, I have no time. Нема проблеми. Нема means there isn't. Проблеми means problems. Plural. So to say there aren't problems, there are no problems, we will say Нема проблем. Нема проблем. Next, also if you remember, we are using the noun in a genitive case together with the numbers that are ending in anything but 1, 2, 3 and 4, right? Except 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, so, for instance, we have шість, it's 6, and дні means days. So, to say 6 days in Ukrainian, we would say, we would use genitive case, and we will have Шість днів. Шість днів. Next. П'ять уроки. П'ять means five. Уроки means lessons or classes. So to say five classes, we would say п'ять уроків. П'ять уроків. Сьогодні в мене п'ять уроків. Today I have five classes. Next. Тринадцять години. 13 means 13 and години means hours. So to say 13 hours in Ukrainian we would say 13 годин. Next, 12 місяці. 12 means 12 and місяці means month in plural. So to say 12 months in Ukrainian we will say 12 місяців. Next, тисяча and ночі. Тисяча means a thousand and ночі means nights. 
okay so to say a thousand nights in ukrainian we will say tisecha nochei tisecha nochei next sto razy sto means hundred and razy means times uh, so uh, to say 100 times we will say Сто разів. Сто разів. Сто разів казала тобі не робити цього. I told you 100 times to not do that. Сто разів. Another thing you should remember about genitive case is that when we talk about a date, we must put the name of the month in genitive case. For instance, перше Listopad. Perše means the first, so here the number doesn't matter, okay? Whatever the number is, the name of the month is going to be in genitive case. Uh, so perše and listopad. Listopad means November. So the first of November in Ukrainian will be perše listopada. Koho čoho listopada. Listopad nominative. Koho čoho listopada genitive. Perše listopada. Next. Сьоме, жовтень, сьоме means the seventh, and жовтень means October. So the seventh of October means, in Ukrainian, сьоме жовтня, сьоме жовтня. Next, двадцять шосте квітень, двадцять шосте means the twenty-sixth. And квітень means April. So the 26th of April in Ukrainian will be 26 квітня. Next. And now I'm going to make it a bit more complicated to you. I will add some extra pronouns and adjectives that are describing the noun which is going to be put in genitive case for you to remember that when we are putting a word, a noun in genitive case, we must make sure that the agreement is there for the pronouns and the adjectives that are describing this word okay so if we put the noun in genitive case we must put a pronoun that describe it in genitive case as well and we must put an adjective that describes it in genitive case as well okay for instance zvuk and yoho kroki zvuk means sound and yoho kroki means his steps okay so to say the sound of his steps, we must put both words yoho and kroki in genitive case. Let's see how it's going to be in Ukrainian. You try to do it by yourself. One, two, three. We will have zvuk yoho krokiv. Here the um, pronoun yoho technically didn't change, but only because it looks the same in genitive case. So believe me, it is in genitive case. It just happens to sound the same way that it is in nominative. So the sound of his steps. Zvuk yoho krokiv. Next. Robota yeji mriya. Robota means the job. And yeji mriya means her dream. Okay? So to say the job of her dream we will say robota yiyi mriyi again here we have yiyi in nominative and yiyi in genitive but that's just because uh, of how these um, pronouns are they are just the same for nominative and genitive now we are going to take a look at different ones and you will see that they are going to change next sweater and моя сестра. Sweater means a sweater or pullover. And моя сестра means my sister. So the sweater of my sister will be in Ukrainian. Sweater моєї сестри. Sweater моєї сестри. See, here the pronoun моя in nominative case changed to moyeji in genitive case. 
and сестра in nominative changed to сестри in genitive. Sweater моєї сестри, the sweater of my sister, or my sister's sweater. Next, телефон and me brat. Телефон means the phone, and me brat means my brother. So the phone of my brother will be телефон мого брата. The phone of my brother, телефон мого брата. So me brat in nominative changed to moho brata in genitive. If you need to revise the possessive uh, pronouns um, declension, I will leave it for you somewhere here so you can find and do your revision. Next, sestra mi batko. Okay, sestra means sister and mi batko means uh, my father. So the sister of my father or my father's sister will be in Ukrainian Сестра мого батька. Сестра мого батька. Next. Дочка. And me, дядько. The daughter of my uncle. In genitive. Дочка мого дядька. Next. Будинок. Їхня родина. Будинок means house. Їхня родина means their family. So to say the house of their family or their family's house, we will say in Ukrainian. Будинок їхньої родини. Будинок їхньої родини. Сі їхня in nominative changed to їхньої in genitive, родина in nominative changed to родини. Next. Родичі мій чоловік. Родичі means relatives and мій чоловік means my husband. So uh, the relatives of my husband will be in Ukrainian. Родичі мого чоловіка. Родичі мого чоловіка. Родичі мого чоловіка. Next. Закон ця країна. Закон ця країна. If you don't know the declension of the pronouns цей, ця, ці, uh, I believe I have the video on it as well. If I do, I will leave the link for you somewhere. Uh, so to say, so закон means the law. And ця країна means this country. Okay, so to say the law of this country, we will say Закон цієї країни. Закон цієї країни. Yes, I do believe I have a video on declension of uh, the pronouns of this type. Next. Олівець та дівчина. Олівець Та дівчина. Олівець means a pencil, and та дівчина means that girl. Okay, ця means this, and та means that. So to say the, the pencil of that girl, we will say Олівець тієї дівчини. Олівець тієї дівчини. Next. Прізвище моя дружина. Прізвище means a surname. And моя дружина means my wife. So to say my wife's uh, surname or the surname of my wife in Ukrainian, we will say Прізвище моєї дружини. Next. Кіт. Твої сусіди. Кіт means cat and твої сусіди means your neighbors. So the cat of your neighbors or your neighbors. Cat. In Ukrainian will be Kit Tvoich Susidiv. Kit Tvoich Susidiv. Next Posmishka Moya Naikrasha Podruha. Posmishka means smile and Moya Naikrasha. Podruha means my best friend. Okay? So the smile of my best friend. In Ukrainian will be Посмішка моєї найкращої подруги. 
посмішка моєї найкращої подруги. Next. Книга. Наша перша вчителька. Книга means a book. Наша перша вчителька means our first teacher. So our first teacher's book or the book of our first teacher will be Книга нашої першої вчительки. Книга нашої першої вчительки. Next. Кохання усе моє життя. Кохання means love and усе моє життя means all my life or my whole life. Okay, so to say the love of my whole life in Ukrainian, we will say Кохання усього мого життя. Кохання усього мого життя. Next. Роман – відомий український письменник. Роман means a novel. Відомий український письменник means a famous Ukrainian writer. Okay? So, the novel of a famous Ukrainian writer in Ukrainian will be... Take your time. And the correct answer is Roman відомого українського письменника. Roman відомого українського письменника. Next. Рішення and Верховна Рада України. Верховна Рада України. Рішення means the decision. Uh, and Верховна Рада України is the name of uh, Ukrainian uh, parliament. Okay, so the decision of Ukrainians, um, of the parliament of Ukraine, Верховна Рада України, will be рішення Верховної Ради України. Рішення Верховної Ради України. And the next one and the last one, I believe, is указ and президент України. Указ means decree and президент України means the president of Ukraine. So the decree of the president of Ukraine in Ukrainian will be указ Президента України. Указ президента України. О, oh, вау, wow, we have another one. День народження and наш спільний друг. День народження means birthday. We have figured it out, I believe, in the beginning of the video. And наш спільний друг means our common friend. So the birthday of our common friend in Ukrainian will be День народження нашого спільного друга. День народження нашого спільного друга. And that is the last one for today. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't. Also, do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that we can learn Ukrainian together. And yeah, please don't forget to let me know whether you want to see the compilations all about every Ukrainian case. Let me know if you are interested in that. And yeah, and I will see you in my next video, hopefully very soon. Bye!